Okay, so welcome back, and we're gonna have a little play now with massaging Judith's shoulder. I've left all the uh, muscles on, and we'll see how we go, how much they smudge when I tend to massage. Uh, the theme would be, for me, would be use as little wax or oil as you possibly can. You want to get as much grip here uh, in terms of working with the fascia and releasing the tissue. I would start just, I'd, I've used a chair today because that seems to be the easiest in terms of filming, but I would start by just connecting up with your client and allowing yourself to breathe with them, connect into a nice, nice quiet space, and as they breathe in, you breathe in too, and that sense of, okay, we're on a journey together now, let's breathe and relax. So start with this. I tend to, while I'm doing that, I have a gentle move of pulling the shoulders back. So my intention here is to open up the chest cavity and create a space of calm. So that's my, that's my journey. Once I've done that, I don't lose contact and I would start my journey across the, um, across the deltoid and shoulder blade. Um, my, my thinking would be that you've already done your warming up moves and your general kind of hello. Um, so now we're looking at the relationship between the trapezius and the deltoid. Very intimate, very important to get right. Now I use this technique a lot. I bring my forearm across. As I bring my forearm across, I rotate my hand and that gives me a nice, use the ulnar side of my arm here to really kind of work on the trapezius. I encourage you, once you've got a sense of practice with this and you've got a sense of it feeling comfortable to do, you ask the client at the same time as coming from the neck down to the uh, edge of the cranium here on this journey, you ask the client to rotate their head the other way. Now they can either just rotate or they can take their ear to their shoulder as well. So you get a combination of a sort of a rhythm as I come down, turn your head to the other way. So you get a sense of working on the fascia and working with muscle while it's moving. Really lovely to uh, practice and um, uh, it works really nicely. So showing your clients how to do this, great move. I tend to have one hand on the uh, deltoid, just supporting, whatever, whatever you want to do. As you come through there, if you feel tissue that is tight and solid, then stop. Allow yourself to just sit on a tight muscle area, uh, roll backwards and forwards, engage with the tissue, get the client to breathe in, and as he or she releases, allow your tissue, your arm, to just sink into that tissue. Now I may be here, in terms of making this video, I don't wanna be here that long, but I may be here two or three minutes to really just gently ease through the tissue of upper trap and really start to get the client to release and move their head at the same time as they're releasing. Really nice, nice move to do. Remember that your moves don't have to always be down the trap. You can hold here and come up. Really nice if you come up the trap. Use the ulnar arm, swing round, so use your forearm as you come up, really to the back of the head. You can slide the head over so the chin goes into the opposite armpit. That works really well and you're stretching through this, uh, this whole group through here. Really nice to do. Coming through here, I'm gonna use my fingertips now and come over the deltoid into the deltoid area. I'm gonna cup it both sides. You can come through this way. If you want to use the other arm, you can swing around this way and come through this way. Um, but the relationship between the trapezius and the deltoid, very intimate as I've already said, Make sure you massage both uh, and breathing as you go so the client really gets a sense of you in connection with them with their breathing. Really nice to do. And again, as you come down the deltoid, you can take that head through so that whole kind of fascial muscle connection all the way through here gets stretched into the back of the head. Great for headaches, great for that sense of I've got a lot on my shoulders at the moment. That kind of journey is what we're into here. If you want to use some other techniques, you can grab the tissue and roll it. Nice technique to do. Be careful, this can be very sore. So just sit with how, to how the client feels. Uh, the speed I'm doing this is about right for me. Less is more. So avoid this, avoid sort of pinching and dropping. 
allow yourself to grab the tissue, hold it as the client breathes in, he or she breathes out, and you release the tissue at the same time. So you're getting a real sense of we're on a journey together. Nice to do. Levator well, scapula is an attachment site that comes up to the back of the neck. Um, about three fingers below the earlobe gives you its connection point on the side of the neck. So if you're working in a couch and you want to release those kind of nice kind of tight areas, both sides here, nice to do. So I'll show you again, three fingers below the earlobe gives you a, a reasonable place for the side uh, transverse processes of the neck and to just gently massage in here, feel those bony tuberances and massage over them. You're working on the other end of this muscle. Really nice to do. Coming back onto the deltoid, sorry, edge of the scapula here. Here's the spine of the scapula and over the top here. This is the area that we often get, certainly if we're in a place where we're round shouldered, um, levator, scap levator scapula gets very tight and congested in here. So actually massaging through there, either with your fingertips, again, less is more. So I tend to sit on top of that kind of quite sore area, not sore for all, but can be. Uh, sit there, get the client to breathe as they breathe out. Just let the shoulder drop and let the head chin come over to the other shoulder. So you get that real sense of stretch through here of allowing that to drop. Okay, so that's pretty much on the back here. You can do your stuff down the middle here. I tend to work on both sides at the same time as I slowly strip down the neck. Sorry, and the upper back here. Really nice. I avoid thumb work. I avoid knuckle work, so for me it's a sort of fat fist, but um, you know, techniques that um, you, you'd be aware of. In terms of working on the neck, I would have one hand holding the client's forehead and your other hand coming up underneath the hair into the occiput. And it's nice to have a nice rotation here. Get hold of the back of the hair, uh, sorry, back of the head, uh, above, underneath that kind of ridge where the hairline sits and lift the head up. Do an actual vertical movement of lifting the head. It stretches all the nice vertebra. It gives the client a sense of feeling held and it's a really nice way of releasing tightness in the, um, in the neck. I want to move on to the front slightly. Uh, it's very important that we have a relationship here on this bony tuberance here, which I mentioned in the first video. Uh, the coracoid process is part of the shoulder blade. It comes through, it's not part of the deltoid or the humerus here. It's a very much an attachment site, and I've written on here pec minor. It's attachment of pec minor, which is all about this muscle group that pulls us forward. So to work on this point is really nice to do. Um, you can work from the back or the front, whichever way suits you best. I tend to work from the back. Um, I tend to stabilize one side, and then you have my fingers coming round and finding that ball. It feels like the end of your thumb. Once you've found it, if you massage around it, it can be very sensitive. Um, and without much pressure at all, the client will say, gosh, that's really sore and aggravating. Try and stay with that. Stay with the discomfort, obviously not too much. You know, on a one to five, you want to be on twos and threes. So the client feels kind of okay. Uh, and massage backwards and forwards. So if you're doing this and you're doing this thinking about our thoughts last Thursday about a video that you could um, send to your clients for them to do on themselves or their partners to do on them, really nice thing to find. And you could do, um, send them a picture of the scapula uh, and explain exactly where the coracoid process is. Very important point to find. You could drop through now onto the chest plate if you want to coming through here and coming down. I don't come further than the second rib, which is the ridge. So if you come from the clavicles down over the sternum, there's a little lump and that's the second rib. So I don't go further than that for fairly obvious reasons. And I just swing through here. Nice to do as you come down over pec minor, can be very tender and sore for some. Again, massaging through the coracoid process is really nice. Squeezing through here grabbing the tissue and sliding it backwards and forwards over the deltoid, nice to do. And you can really come through with your fingertips here and push through palms, fingertips, whatever feels 
Right. Okay. So the last thing I think I will get my client to do is sit back centre. After you've done your work, um, I would encourage people to have a nice stretch. Uh, one of the nicest, I think, in this area is where the client brings their hands behind their head. You stand behind them, make sure you have a pillow between you and your client. You take their elbows and you pull the shoulders back and you're pushing them up against your tummy as you're pulling back the pecs. Make sure it's not too much. You can ask people to just bring their arms forward. They push their fingertips, sort of their elbows into your fingertips, just gently pushing their elbows together, very gently, nothing too strong. Just hold that for a few seconds and then relax and then get them to stretch again. It's a really nice kind of uh, release that helps the stretches. So again, bring them forward, get their, bring their elbows together. So they're pushing their elbows together into your hands very gently. Hold for a few seconds and then stretch back. And I hope you've got that on the video. Uh, we can talk about this a bit more uh, this Thursday if you, if you uh, tune in and we'll do a, a better visual of that if you, if you want to. Okay, I hope that all helps.